Hey coders and welcome to episode 5 of our form service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be taking a look at another type of item in our disposal and that is called a text item. So there are actually two classifications for text items. One is actually called a text item in and of itself, and that is on the left-hand side of the screen. And this type of item is meant for shorter text inputs. So something like a name or just something that will fill a single line of text. However, on the right-hand side of the screen, we can also see that there is something called a paragraph text item. And this is for longer answers. So if you have multiple lines of text, you would probably want to add a paragraph text item to your form. Again, this is for paragraph length text. So we're going to look at both of these types of text items in the code, but first let's review our methods for today. So I have five methods that I use quite frequently, and they are as insert type here item. Again, this is similar to the last episode where you could say as text item or as paragraph text item. It's the same nomenclature for that. Also, we have add insert type here item. Again, that could be something like an add text item. We also have set required, set general feedback, and finally create feedback. So let's go into the code and see what we can do with text items. Now, text items are rather simple items, and the only thing that differentiates itself from a, a generic item, again, is the addition of a couple specific methods uh, made for text items. So, if you wanted to get those methods, you would have to first typecast your generic item into, say, a text item. So, let's say we have this form right here, and as you can see, we have a paragraph text item. This is our only question on our form. So if we wanted to say get that item, we could say form dot get items. And again, because it's the only item on our form, we know it's going to be in the zeroth indexed. However, let's say we wanted to do a specific uh, method on a on a long uh, on a paragraph text item, right? Let's say we want to set that item to be required. Well, if we go check out our methods, we can see that the only uh, methods that we have access to for setting things on a generic item are set title and set help text. So we can't set this uh, item to be required on just a generic item. We need to typecast that, and the way to do that is to again say dot as, and then we can typecast it into any uh, specific item that we would like. So again, for the paragraph text item, we would use this method right here as paragraph text item, and then after that, we could access more specific um, methods that were that were made for the paragraph text item, like such as set required. All right, so that is the again, this is the typecasting method as paragraph text item. You can use this for any item that you want to typecast. But now let's move on to our next method, which is going to be add. So we're going to say form.add and let's add a text item. So the way to do that is simply form.add text item. And that is all. So if we hit the save button, and actually before that, let me just set this title just so that we can be super abundantly clear that this is our text item. So we'll say our text item. All right. Now, if we save it and we run it, if we check out our form, now we have our text item right here. And you can tell that it's just a text item because this is a short answer text for the response. It's not like this. This is a paragraph text item. And you can see that this is meant for long answer texts. But this is just a short answer text. All right, so that is how to add a text item. Now let's check out how to make it required. And we kind of got a little preview of that up in here. But if we say something like form dot add text item, and now what we can do is we can use the method set required. And by default, it is an optional question. So all of these questions that we put into our form, by default, they are all optional, but we can change that by saying dot set required, and then we can pass in the Boolean true. So if we now save it and we run it, Let's check out our form. And there we go. We have the little red asterisk right here. 
and also we can see that this has been switched on to required. So this means that this is a required question. We cannot submit the form without answering this question uh, in, in, in with using some kind of text. All right, so that is set required. Now let's go check out our next method, which is set general feedback. So this is something I just added on just because I didn't want to make this video too short, but this is, um, this is called set general feedback, right? Oops, form dot add text item. And now that we have our text item or our paragraph text item, it will work for both. We can say set general feedback. And as you can see, this takes in a peculiar uh, parameter and that is of type quiz feedback. So just by the name right here, we can already tell that this is going to be a, or this needs to be a quiz our form needs to be set up as a quiz before we can pass in any quiz feedback. So anyways, let's make our form uh, exactly that right now. We could do it programmatically again by saying form.set is quiz and then enabling that to true. We could also go in here manually and if we go into settings and we go into quizzes, we can just uh, slide this on to make this as quiz. But because this is an app script, uh, uh, playlist, we're just going to do it programmatically. So again, this is going to be form dot set is quiz equal to true. All right, and now we can set our general feedback. So again, this is this parameter is a quiz feedback. So we need to access our form app again. And then now let's go on to our very last method. And that is create feedback. So what this is going to do is it's going to return for us a quiz feedback uh, builder. So what we can do is we can build our uh, quiz feedback. So let's just do something very, very simple just because this is not uh, super um, involved or this is not super related to our text item. Uh, let's just say a set text and we'll say um, uh, the battle of Hastings didn't actually occur in Hastings. All right, so this will be the, um, the 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 text for our feedback, and then we will just build it now. So what when we build it, then that means it's going to return for us a quiz builder, and then that is going to be our general feedback. All right, I think this will make a little bit more sense once we actually run it. But um, here we go. We have form dot add text item, and let's actually just give it a title, just because that will make it a little bit more. Um, make a little bit more sense. So if we now set this to um, when did the battle of Hastings occur? All right, and actually let me drop a line here and I will drop another line right there. We have a lot of methods going on all at once. So I wanna be absolutely sure that we have clear and clean code. All right, so now if we hit save and we hit run, then it will set it as a, as a quiz and then it will be able to now set this general feedback once we submit. So let me give you a preview of what this looks like. So we'll click on our preview button. Again, here are some um, questions that we can answer. This one needs to be required, so we'll just put in some garbage here. All right, it says, when did the Battle of Hastings occur? So we'll type in, uh, 1066, we'll hit submit. All right, and because this is a quiz, now we can view our score. And as you can see, here is the feedback that we wrote, uh, that we programmatically put in our code. This is the feedback for this question, the Battle of Hastings didn't actually occur in Hastings. All right, so we uh, had a little fun experimenting with general feedback and quizzes and quiz feedback. But guys, I hope you enjoyed some of these other methods that we learned on the text item. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.